Welcome everybody to another episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I am Jeffrey. I'm Keith. Good for you, Keith. And the rest of you are lucky because today we have a really special guest with us. We've gone super high tech, Keith. We're not yeah. messing around. We've got super high tech coming to us all the way from Tennessee. We've got Jay Paul Jackson. Welcome, Jay Paul. What's happening, guys, man? It is so cool today to be your guest on Guys Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeff, or Jeff and Keith, or... It is, it's, oh, it's <laughs> Keith and Jeffrey, okay? Come on, guy. <coughs> this has been some some small source of contention. Not really, no. We Keith, Keith gets to go first. It's because he's old. I'm old. He's like a thousand. So he gets the respect, you know, to... Uh, to, to go first in that. But welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode. Glad to have you here. We're uh, winding down toward Christmas here. We are. Yeah. So we got a lot of stuff happening. We're at a special time today. Normally we're at 3 o'clock, but we are live today at 10 o'clock our time because we've got our, uh, we've got our Christmas party today. The Mud Buddy Merry Christmas party. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yes, Merry Jay Christmas. Paul does not get to go because <laughs> he is in Tennessee. So he's really sad about that. But yes, yeah, so we, a little bit later, we're going to, we're going to head off and, and, Party hard. And then go shoot some ducks. And then we're going to go shoot some ducks. Absolutely. Has Jay Paul shot any ducks this year? You know what? I have not shot any ducks yet. <laughs> I've shot a couple of deer. Fact, uh, I think I sent you a picture day before yesterday. If you look in that last 30 minutes, I got uh, a, a doe with a meat cooler. But I uh, hadn't shot ducks yet. I'm going to start this weekend. And I can't wait. Now, I may not be there in person today, but dude, virtual happy. reality. I'm gonna be there, so uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, yes, thanks yes. to this computer. <laughs> I'm gonna carry this. I'm gonna carry this computer around with me all day. Just be like, here's Jay Paul. <laughs> uh, excellent. So, as usual, everybody, we are gonna be doing a Q and A a little bit later, um, and Jay Paul, who is an expert in many things, is gonna help us out with that. So that's gonna be exciting. Um, and then we've got all of this stuff to give away as well. So uh, stick with us. We've got lots of fun stuff. But while people are jumping on, Keith, what's been uh, happening? You were out of town. What? I was out was of town. That? I was in uh, Union City, Tennessee on uh, Monday. That's in J. Paul's area. I was in J. Paul's neck of the woods, uh, Dyersburg, on Sunday night. Um, spent the day at uh, one of our new dealers in Union City Marine. Abernathy's. No, 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 not Union City Marine. No, Union City. Oh, yeah, I was in Union City, Tennessee. That's what it was. Sorry. A Abernathy's, our new dealer. Abernathy's. Uh, it was an amazing dealership. Yeah. Great mechanics in the back. Met the owner, Tootie. Amazing guy. Uh, what a facility. I mean, just amazing. Right. The amount. Uh, we come driving up, there's 12 mud buddies on the back of Excel boats right there as you turn into the parking lot. Just a. Uh, a great facility, a great group of guys, and, a, and an owner who knows what's going on and is in touch with his sales team and what's going on with the economy and everything around him because wow. he sells merchandise. Yes. They're, yeah, they're awesome out there. Go ahead, Jim. Abernathy's is unbelievable. I watched uh, Saturday four F4s with uh, HDRs rolled out of that parking lot. Um, they pro, they they move unbelievable volume, and I'll tell you what, uh, Terry Tootie Randall, I apologize for that faux pas on Keith's part. Right there. <laughs> but, uh, I hope y'all let me back in the showroom. Show me, back me too. Sorry. <laughs> uh, they're a great dealership, and I'll tell you what, it's so cool to see, you know, how their techs were excited about having you and Ricky there, so they can really provide the best customer service possible and we're really thrilled to have those guys as a dealer and you're right the owner who knows his stuff so that's a shameless plug for one of our premier dealers Abernathy's Marine in Union City Tennessee and, uh, and it was fun having you here too it, it, it was fun to be there I mean I've never been to that part of the country um, the food um, <laughs> put it this way I was in food coma on Monday night Thinking, how am I going to get to the airplane on Tuesday? But uh, Keith has been back for like maybe an hour, and that is all I've heard all day. Dude, is all the food that's the nonstop. Bar the barbecue there is like none I've ever had before. And I've had people tell me, "Well, you needed to go to this place. You need to go," and that was probably true. And I wish I would have had more time. 
But the couple places that Enrique and I got to eat was amazing. We don't have that here in Utah. We don't. We've got some good places. And there's some fine barbecue places. But back there, bro, they, it's another level. And the mac and, roll, the mac and cheese at Memphis Barbecue was like nothing I've ever had in my life. Memphis Barbecue. Memphis Barbecue. I could have... That's your new home. I could have ate a whole pot. Yeah, I told Jay Paul when he comes out in the uh, end of December, bring me a, bring me a platter because I, I will be ready for it by then. I'm not ready for it <laughs> now. Not. I'm still trying to clear the system. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was it was an amazing time. Yeah, you know. You know <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I've never been. Well, I'll put this way. I've never tried green, so I don't know. But uh, the brisket, the sausage, the mac and cheese, the cornbread. Was yeah. just amazing. I, I, I told my wife if we had like eight hundred bucks right now, I said we'd be on the plane headed back to Memphis to get some barbecue because it was that good. I don't know. Do they deliver that far? That's what you need. You yeah, need some yeah, delivery. Clear I mean, iron. UPS yeah, overnight, actually, huh? <laughs> actually, when he was performing in Las Vegas, uh, Elvis Presley used to have the Rendezvous, which is another super famous rib joint there in downtown Memphis. It's in a little alley across from the famous Peabody Hotel. And when Elvis was performing in Vegas on the Strip, he would regularly have ribs and barbecue from the rendezvous flown in. So yes, um, you can, you can. get it delivered. The Germantown Commissary, Central Barbecue, the rendezvous, uh, Corky's, I think all of those places will ship you barbecue and all the fixings via FedEx. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you just gotta get a you gotta get a little more famous, Keith. I gotta get you a little just, more you gotta famous. Up your game just a little bit, and then we can we can do that. You could you put that in your writer. Trust me, if if you've had it, you would be right there with me because I know. <laughs> and Central Barbecue was really good. We ate there um, Saturday when we landed, and then okay. we went over to um, the Pyramid. Bass oh yeah, Pro. yeah, the Bass Pro Shops. Yeah, that, okay, that was amazing. so I want to hear from everybody out there. I want to hear your best barbecue. Wherever you're at, if you think if you think you know where that is, you've got a place better. I want to hear it right here in the comments. So start listening to your best, and you know maybe maybe we'll get some shout outs from from some of those, or we'll have to go and try them. Because you know, uh, I smell a competition in yeah. the wind. <laughs> our, our good friend Kevin Lusk at Cooper River Marine in South Carolina, he says he told me before I even left, he's like, you haven't had barbecue unless you've had South Carolina barbecue. Sure. Oh. And I'm like, oh, now, now I just got, a, now I got a fight going on. All right, okay, so, so Jay Paul, what about you? Where's your, where's your place? Oh man, I mean, there. Look, man, I live in the South, and and I, I'm in barbecue um, heaven. I mean, the thing is, a lot of the things that a lot of the places that he named, you know, at least three of the joints that he went into. Keith, you guys went to, uh, particularly at Central Barbecue, have all been um, featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives, and a lot right. of food network shows. But you, you didn't make probably the best in the barbecue in the world to me is down in Brownsville, Tennessee, about an hour from here in Haywood County. It is a hole in the wall. I mean, it's a shack that looks like it's about to fall in, <laughs> and it is super famous all around the country. Helen's Barbecue. And, oh, and Helen's, it's amazing. You go in to this joint, and there are probably three, maybe four tables where you can actually sit and eat. It's almost all takeout. Helen, every day, her husband fires up the barbecue, the smoke room, and back. And when you go in, you buy it by the pound. Um, <laughs> you go in, you buy a couple <laughs> pounds of barbecue, a pound of slaw, uh, a pound of baked beans, and they'll go in. Cyril is. Uh, uh, sandwich buns <laughs> it's a roll. for you to take home with you and it is Helen's barbecue is probably my favorite in the world all right well next yeah. time I'm there yeah we'll that's, have to go there that would be your next stop because I'm looking forward to going back soon I'm not sure how I'm going to finagle the trip yet but I'm going to work that's on your it. plan You're oh yeah plan. we're going to be we're going to be doing it somehow because it was just amazing and the people were great our waiter at uh, the Memphis barbecue he was amazing he came up noticed we could, we're you know we're out of towners and he could tell it right off the spot and he's like where are you from we're like Utah he's like what are you doing in Utah and <laughs> so we talked to him and and he knew a lot about um, Union City area about what's going on and sure. what had been there and what what's going to be happening in the future and great recommendations on the food that's nice. all I can think about is all you can think food. about I know 
But you got to get your head back around because we've got some Q&A coming up. We've got lots of questions happening today. So I need your head straight on this motor stuff. Now, remember, everybody, do go on and like and share. Uh, we also want to hear all of your comments. Uh, if you have ideas, um, uh, suggestions for what you want to see, if you want to make Keith do something crazy, now's your chance. Go on, comment, like, and share uh, this uh, this show. Cause if, if Memphis Barbecue is included in that crazy <laughs> stuff, I may just do it. <laughs> I know. Oh. Dude, it's not a barbecue joint, but... Uh, you know, here in the South, we've got so many great restaurants. If you get down to make it south of Memphis, down in Oxford, Mississippi, there's a place called Age Attacks on the Square. Age and it Axe. is as traditional Southern cooking as you could possibly get, from black eyed peas and hog jaw to turnip greens, uh, you name it. If it's a Southern food, they've got it on their menu. I, you know, you're going to have to come back and spend about a week with me, Keith. And, you know, we'll do kind of a guy Pierre thing. I'll just yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go around, we'll go to Neil's uh, and uh, here in Dyersburg and then go over and get Bad Bob's Barbecue, this award-winning, unbelievable Craig's and Covington, Helen's down in uh, Brownsville, Tennessee, the Rendezvous down in downtown Memphis. If you ever go to the Rendezvous, you got to get a pitcher of beer. I know you don't drink. But, uh, I'll have I'll, Jeffrey will I'll take my pitcher. I'll have Keith's part. <laughs> Yeah, pitcher of beer, a cheese plate, and uh, some dry oh, ribs. Yeah. And that is an unbelievable that sounds southern good. treat, man. I'm uh, that, I mean, Nobody I mean, knows how to barbecue like they do it here in Tennessee, I promise you. I, certainly not certainly not some low country boy from South Carolina. <laughs> oh, oh, you hear you, that, Kevin? You coming be, at you, you, you be baby. careful. There are a lot of comments coming yeah. from South Carolina uh, right uh, now, Jake Paul. You better, Jake Paul, you better I'm watch gonna, it. I'm going to have to wear my sweatpants. <laughs> South Carolina brothers, I've, just, I've had their barbecue. Ooh, we got a okay, good okay, okay. Listen, listen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this off right there. Hold on. Uh, I, so I just want to make a couple of shout outs. I've got Jackson Hill on. Uh, Jackson is on. Generally, good to see you again, Jackson. I've got Jeff Toy saying hello, guys. I got Frank Williams on saying what's up. James Stevens is on. Uh, Bryce, uh, Bryce Evans is in love with your sweatshirt right there. Nice shirt, Bryce. Huh? I like it too. Those will probably go on sale in the next month or so. Um, and I can't quite tell you where I'm probably on BPS's website is probably where you're gonna find those so backwater performance system is probably where those will end up but I'll keep you posted because those are hot off the presses right now that's like a prototype you got this right is there. this is for sale right now no, I'm, 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 I'm starting, oh, you're gonna I'm say starting <laughs> my airline fund to go back to you, Memphis yeah, for you, some more barbecue. Your barbecue fund. Yes. Got so, it. So, That's what, like $5,500? No, I'll take $100. you take 100 bucks. All right. <laughs> Start small. Work Got our way up. Sure, sure. So it's a, it's rare. That's good. Um, and he says Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas Merry to Christmas. you and everybody out there. Um, let's see. We fixed that with property with owner. Okay. Yeah, we got a Memphis barbecue is the best from Bill Harrett. He hey, agrees Bill, with you. I agree. <laughs> but this is the best. Jeff Fuchs, who who is a big fan of the show, is on. We know Jeff very well. Yes. Um, Jeff sent me an email that I forwarded to you because he had some questions. Jeff and Keith it just got back, so he's going to get to those if you haven't. Um, but he says he talked to Clint as well, and he's going to pull the trigger on a forty this week. I'm so, yes, Jeff. Yes. So you, my friend, are a very lucky man. Can, can, I, can we give him something to go with this new boat? Well, yes, but here's the thing. Uh -oh. That is really awesome because Jeff is the smart one by buying now because he's going to get that $250 gift card. So we're not giving him anything else. <laughs> so I don't know if he needs anything else. He's going to be able to buy oh, us come all. come on. I, because all right. I don't have one. And they're really amazing. We're going to give him <laughs> the new Lucky Duck little tumbler. That will be amazing in yes, your boat with this in new your boat, buddy motor. Early in the morning, that's going to keep your beverage warm all Whatever morning. your beverage happens Whatever to be. Whatever it may be. <laughs> Especially in the cold morning, I can tell you what my friends have in theirs, but I won't say it out loud. It, it, does, not, yeah, it does not smell like coffee. No, trust me. No, I get so, it. I understand. I would never do such so a thing. So there's our first giveaway for today. Awesome. So, so Jess, that's you. Congratulations, Ben. That's really exciting. I hope I hope that works out, and I hope that uh, motor just. And Jeff, if you don't buy it, we want the cup back. I, yeah, you don't get the cup if you don't buy it. <laughs> we need proof of purchase. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so that's pretty exciting. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here, and I'm gonna.
Uh-oh. I have had, I, I, you know, I've really had it. Okay, like there's just Keith with this non-stop. Oh, so is what I'm gonna do. You're gonna cut me out of the show. I'm gonna give this one to Keith. No. We no. put this one aside. This lucky duck. Here, I'll show you there too. This is our lucky duck tumbler, uh, Jay Paw. You don't know this, but Keith just whines and whines and whines about not having his own cup. So I'm tired of it, and I've got a little love in my heart today. So I'm gonna give this lucky duck tumbler right here to Keith. Oh, I'm gonna tear up. Oh, so like Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Keith. Thanks, guys. Yes. Now I just oh, need to get my. You know, it's amazing. UPS loses so much stuff between. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Yes. I, 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 will, I will wear. I will. I will use that with my orange shirt. From Jackson Hill here. <laughs> There is a real bidding war on your sweatshirt right now. There really is a real bidding war? All right. We started at 20, and we've gone up by dollar by dollar, and now it's at 35. So Come on, guys. I want to... Okay, listen. He will right he will strip it off in, on camera. Oh, if, my shirt's tucked in, so we're okay. <laughs> I can't show... Oh, no. <laughs> now it starts to go down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, excellent. Okay, so we've got some of those. Okay, so we're going to get to your questions here in just a minute, but before... We've got uh, we've got Jay Paul with us, and Jay Paul does so many things. Jay Paul works for XL Boats. He's our uh, business operations manager out there. But more so than taking care of all the actual important stuff that happens at XL Boats, he is a very accomplished um, hunter. He's also a very accomplished dog trainer, and that's something that I want to talk about while we have him on right here. Um, and we've talked about this, Jay Paul, a little bit on the podcast. So if if you don't know, we uh, Jay Paul is the host of the On the X podcast. Uh, it's the Excel Boats On the X podcast, powered by Mud Buddy Motors. Um, he's the host of that, and we've had uh, we discussed it a little bit on that with Freddie King as well, who also works a lot with the dogs. But it's a uh, it's kind of a big deal right now. Uh, duck season is off and running, and these dogs are such an important tool during this season that it's so important, just like your gun, your boat, your motor, all of that, your your dog is a, a very important tool and it's important that it is taken care of. And so it's awesome that we've got Jay Paul to talk to us a little bit about that today. So along with your questions, you can start asking your most burning desired dog questions right here and Jay Paul will be able to answer some of those. But So our show's going to the dogs. Our show's gone to the dogs today oh, man. with Jay Paul, but though it's very technical. It's yes, very technical, very technical. Dogs okay. with yes. the dogs. So, There's nothing wrong with the show going to the dogs. <laughs> down there right now. It's about 35 degrees here, and she's out in the training yard working a dog right now. Of course, a lot of people have gone south. And before we get fired up on the dogs here, got to give a shout out to Bryce Evans. I hope you're still watching. Thomasville, Georgia is a hotbed. Of retriever training, yes, uh, in the winter time, and and I have had uh, a burn-in sandwich on toast. There, uh, <laughs> Alan's burn-in sandwich on toast, Christ, and it is fabulous. And a couple people chimed in about South Carolina barbecue. Uh, you know, I, I was most of that was tongue in cheek. There's great food all over the South, but uh, it is um, right now duck season and. Um, Got a question right here, right off the bat from Jeff Warner. JP, my four-year-old lab developed a horrible habit this year of whining and yelping. Oh, my goodness, in the blind when she sees birds set in or working. Oh. Never done this before. Any tips or thoughts? Electrocution. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, I mean, that is a giant. Let me tell you, there are, about, there, there are a couple of things. Probably the... the the three hardest things as a professional retriever trainer that I deal with are uh, gun shyness or gun concern. Usually that's man-made. Um, dogs that are very hunt test wise, you know, a dog that will never ever consider breaking when you're in training, even in hunting maybe because he's wearing a training collar, but you go to the line at a hunt test and they go crazy and that is so hard to correct. And then the last one, is probably one of the toughest of all, um, vocalization. Whether it's on the line or whining in the blind while the ducks are working, some dogs even start barking. And you know, here's the thing, um, Jeff. Oh man, you know, she won't try and respond to e call, and she doesn't want to. Okay, so um, Jeff, here's the thing: that it is a very, very difficult. 
process to break because a lot of dogs that vocalize when they get excited, they don't even realize that they're doing it. They're not even aware of it. So the first thing that you gotta do is you gotta make that dog aware of it. And that's gonna require zero tolerance. And that's probably gonna screw up a hunt or two when birds are working here in the very near future. Because every time that dog makes a noise, you're gonna have to give that dog a correction. Now, correcting a dog with an e-collar for vocalization is not very effective. As a matter of fact, a lot of times it's counterproductive. It'll cause them just whine more. Um, the, the exception to that is a, a really good high quality bark collar because it can time it right, but sometimes dogs whining gonna get picked up by the bark collar. So what you're gonna have to do with this dog, Jeff, if you wanna correct this is, every time that dog starts to make a whimper, you're gonna have to give a correction in some manner. And I don't know your dog's temperament, um, and I would never tell anyone to abuse their dog by any means, but you know, it, may, it may be um, simply grabbing the dog's muzzle and telling it hush and squeeze it really hard every time the dog vocalizes. You know, it may be um, taking a, a rolled up uh, magazine or a reinforced um, paper towel tube with you. Uh, my, my daughters, they have a dog that it yaps a lot and they call it their bopper because it doesn't hurt at all, but it shuts the dog up when they whack them across the nose with it with it. So you're going to have to be zero tolerance, make a correction every single time this dog makes a noise. And you may have to, you know, forego some opportunities of birds working because you're working on the dog. You can't hunt and work on your dog at the exact same time. Um, I hope Freddie King will chime in here a little bit later on this too. I'm sure Freddie's seen plenty of this as well, but yeah. you know, my biggest piece of advice Zero tolerance, correct, every time, and be ever built digital. Fantastic. Uh, tell us, Jay Paul, maybe your top five or, or some tricks for, for the cold weather to keep your dog healthy. Warm. Warm during, I mean, during this, this cold season. You know, I see my buddy Mike Shogren, who's up in Bemidji, Minnesota, is uh, watching now, too. Hey, Mike. Feel free, because you got to know a lot about this subject living up there oh, in the Arctic Circle in Bemidji, yeah. Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever been to Bemidji, but it's almost as far north as you can go without getting into Canada. And you frequently hear about it in International Falls as the cold spot on the national weather. Um, so, Mike, feel free to make a comment. Uh, a couple of tips in cold weather. Number one, um, if it, you know, we generally do not feed our dogs before we work them out or before we hunt, but the exception to that rule is in cold weather. If it's going to be really, really cold, uh -oh. fill your dog up. Don't, don't feed them a big old bowl of food. We don't want them to bloat or get gastric torsion, but do give your dog some fuel, some carbs to start the day with, you know, a cup of food and the morning before you head out to the pitter blind is always a great idea. Take some food with you. Um, make sure you keep that dog's energy level and blood sugar up. Number two, uh, cold water saps body heat about 10 times faster than the regular air does. So if your dog is gonna be in the water a lot and it's really, really cold, uh, make sure that you give the dog plenty of recovery time to warm back up between long swims. Um, doesn't hurt to, you know, if your dog's not good at drying itself off, doesn't hurt to take a towel with you or, or something that you can dry that dog off with between retrieves. You know, keeping that dog that, that way away from that dog's body is going to keep it warmer. A lot of dogs really like dog vests. Some hate them. Some dogs feel like traps full of water in there. And so if your dog doesn't like the vest, don't force it on your dog. Okay. But uh, make sure you give that dog plenty of time between the long cold water retrieves. And probably the most important thing for people to recognize in cold weather is the dog's gonna tell you when hypothermia is about to set in and it's reached its limit. You know, I, I the stupidest thing that I've seen and heard stories of, of guys doing is taking a dog that refuses to go on a retrieve in ice water and either try and force it in with the collar or throwing the dog in. If you've got a dog, and I've seen this, I've seen some of the best, most driven retrievers out there shut down because they just get too cold. You know, and guys say, well, God will say, well, my dog never quits. I mean, this dog would run through the fires of hell and across broken glass to make a retrieve. You know, why is it no going? Well, it's not going because the dog's body is telling it, hey, 
you can't go. Send right. signals to that dog's brain, and the dog's trying to honor that. The yeah. dog will tell you when it gets too cold. If you've got a really driven dog, and that dog's sitting there shivering, and you're screaming back, and that dog's acting like it wants to go, but it's not getting in the water, you need to back off, dry that dog off if you can, let it warm up, because hypothermia can take a dog just as quick as overheating can. And the dog will tell you way in advance when it's getting too cold. So those are my best cold weather tips. I'm sure when you've seen that happen, Jay Paul, when somebody treats their dog like that, it probably takes a lot for you not to say anything or even right. maybe Smack physically somebody. bop somebody on the head. Because, I mean, that's your that's your that's not just, to me, dogs aren't just dogs. That's your family. And to see somebody do that to their their hunting buddy, oh, yeah. they need to take be taken out behind the wet tree and stomped on. Absolutely. Hey, on, on at least one occasion, I said, hey, dumbass, how about I throw you in the water? Let's see how you <laughs> Let's like see, that. Yeah, Let's see, yeah. you make a retrieve right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Make it out there. <laughs> so, oh, Je- oh. Jeff Warner, I'm actually going to send this hat. This is our new uh, XL uh, Sitka gear. Trucker hat. This is our. This is the brand new one. This is a really great hat. This so is a popular Jeff item too. That's that, that's another item that's gotten lost between. <laughs> the mail yeah. back there in Dyersburg's a little Ooh, bit rough, huh, Jay Paul? Hey, oh, Jay Paul, what about in that s- instance? Because you hunt there and and you train. Do you take more than one dog? Oh, or yeah. two or three dogs? I mean, depending on how they are and the guys that you hunt with, you know how their dogs are. Does that is that a good idea? Oh yeah, I mean there there there's nothing wrong if you've got a dog that will honor another dog. There's nothing wrong with hunting two of them together. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of situations where I really encourage it. You know, um, and, and there's good and there's bad um, about hunting two dogs or three dogs or four dogs together at the same time. Yeah, you know, there's nothing worse than going hunting with somebody else and you've got a really really well trained retriever you know a hunting retriever champion master mm-hmm. level dog and every time you shoot a bird the other dog breaks and the idiot just lets his dog go and make every retreat and uh it's wow. not only frustrating because your dog doesn't get any work but eventually it can cause a really steady dog watching this other dog break every time to finally reach its limit where it's going to start breaking too right yeah so for you guys out there that hunt with other guys with dogs, you know, I've heard guys say, well, I want my dog to break every time so he can get to the bird fast. Um, well, that's fine, but don't be hunting your dog with somebody else. Yeah. Because it's not good. But, I mean, it's great. In cold weather situations, you know, there are times when I will take two or three dogs and rotate them out during the day. Here in West Tennessee, we hunt a lot of cornfields. And uh, we've got some really big blinds. I mean, there's one place that I hunt the blind will shoot 15 people safely. Oh, yeah. And they're on really, really good days, that blind will kill over 100 ducks illegally. And, you know, we'll take two or three or four dogs and either, you know, have a dog in each dog box that will honor one another, letting them take turns making retrieves, or got a dog that wears down, start showing you that it's cold. You know, jump in the boat, go back over to the truck, put it in the box, let it dry off and warm up and grab a fresh dog and take out there. So, yeah, I mean, hunting two or three dogs together, can, and it can be a heck of a lot of fun, too, when you've got two great dogs. Oh, he's frozen. Or, Just like that, it ends. You still with us? Can you hear us now? <laughs> well, while Jay Paul is sorting himself oh, out. Oh, there in the background. <laughs> oh, there. Okay, are you, are you there? My internet connection went out of state with my back. Yep, yep there you are. Back. There you back. You okay, I've got that a, frozen face look like. You did. That was <laughs> Okay, so uh, I've got a question from Trevor Labner. Do you think neoprene vest makes the dog colder when the water is freezing with ice? Um Yes, I think there are times, I just read that about the neoprene mask. Yeah, Trevor, I think there are times when it does make the dog cold. I've had a couple of dogs that hated the neoprene mask because, you know, the water gets trapped inside that vest against their body and they don't know how to get it out. And, you know, um, I mean, you can put your hand up inside a dog's neoprene vest and a lot of times it'll be really, really nice and warm up there. But mm-hmm. if it didn't really snug fitting like a wetsuit, um, 
yeah, it can definitely make the dog cold. And then there are some dogs that just don't like it. So, you know, you got to know your dog. If you do have a neoprene vest on your dog, make sure that it fits well, that it's nice and snug, uh, where it really presses up against that dog's body like a wetsuit. So it doesn't allow excess water to be trapped between the neoprene um, and the torso of the dog. Right. Awesome. Trevor, I'm going to send you... Uh, there, Jeffrey. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, hand up. Hold on. I'm going to send Trevor. Trevor, that duck call is for you. Congratulations. Um, all of you who are getting these prizes, there's a link at the top of the description. Click that, fill out the info, um, and we'll get that sent off to you. But Trevor Ladner, that duck call, that's the uh, that's trash my favorite talker. one. That's the trash talker. Are you getting, yours is learning. right over here. Mine you is right over there. No, I don't want to practice on it. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear me try and hump that thing. Um... <laughs> There have been a couple of good observations on this, by the way, I want to uh, relay. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Frank Williams, you know, is coming about, he takes the vest off from time to time so the dog can dry off. That's a great idea. Um, and you should do that. Uh, Frozen again. Hello. His little man cave. Frank Williams, he was just saying, next season I will have two dogs when I get my puppy back from the trainer. There you That's go. That's exciting. Having, having those two dogs. All sunning dogs. Oh, are you back, Jay Paul? You know, this is why, you know, yeah, it's... I'm back. I'm oh, okay, good. Okay, I was just telling them that, you know, it's you never know with this technology stuff. Right. Um, so, Sorry about that, guys. no, no, you're, you're okay. good. You're so, good. Hey, guys, make sure when we do have to get off the air, just keep sending them the, the, uh, the questions. Jay Paul's going to help us out here. If it's something Jeff and I can't do, especially if it's dog training... We'll tag Jay Paul in so he can answer those questions. Maybe even get some from our buddy Freddie King too. Yes, so absolutely. Um, All right. Uh, any other anything we else? A lot that of stuff to give away. We do have a lot of stuff to give away. We should, one, two, we should do that. The next four people who post is that going to be too hard on you? I don't. I don't know. I mean, come on, Carmen Stearns. <laughs> let's see who had the who had the highest price. Who wanted the sweatshirt the bad the most? It was. It's, ca it's cash wow. only. Cash on Matt. All right, let's get Matt the. Uh, uh, well, um, how about the how about the deep shirt? Oh, I like the deep apparel. Their deep stuff apparel, is amazing. I know. Their stuff is amazing. And you know what? I it's wear their. I wear their a really nice the picture time. of a black lab on the back. Oh, see, that's there nice. There you go, Matt Cowell. That oh, he says, what size is it? Well, what size are oh, you, he Matt? He's talking about the hoodie. Oh, he's talking about the. Oh, hoodie. the hoodie. Oh, I thought he was talking about the deep. Okay, the never deep mind. Send him. Send him. Because who knows what shirt... That's it, XL. It's an XL. So I don't know. That's what's hard. That's why we don't yeah. give away a lot of t-shirts. It's hard with those... With those. Matt Cow, we're going to send you something. Either that t-shirt or we'll get you a hat if the t-shirt does not fit you. Um, let's see. Oh, we got lots of people say... Uh, oh, we got... Um, your wife's on. Oh, hi, honey. Your wife, want, your wife wants the sweatshirt, too. Okay, it's yours. Um, it won't cost her a dime, either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I've got I've got this ducks hat. So, ducks is actually for those of you who follow us along. We have um, one of our pro staffers named Andrew Flair, who's a he's great. He's a young kid, big fisherman, big duck hunter. He's actually giving away one of our boats. He calls it the uh, the squeaker seeker. The squeaker seeker. It's almost as good as a salty. It's assess. almost as good as a salty assassin, but not quite. Um, but he's got that boat and he's giving it away here in just a little while. Um, he's a really great pro staffer. Uh, he does a lot of fun stuff. He's mostly on YouTube. Really great. But his company, they give away that their clothing line is called Ducks. Ducks Waterfowl Doc, or Ducks Waterfowl Co. is what it is. Um, and this is one of their hats that he, that he sent us. Uh, so we're going to give that away. And, uh, so check, check that out. Check out Andrew Flair. Cause he's, a uh, He's pretty awesome. Did you say who we're giving that away to? No, no, I haven't given that away to anybody. Oh, yet. you haven't given that away? No, I haven't, I haven't oh. decided. I was just uh, I'm bringing it up. back. All right, what about... Uh, man, did we give anything to, to Bryce? He did post first when you uh, when you said that. Oh, said Bryce what? Evans. Oh, that? No? Perfect. Bryce Evans, duck's hat for you, my friend. Bryce, thanks for posting. Thanks for watching. Nancy, you don't get anything. You, oh, yes, you're gonna well, you're going to have to figure that out with Keith here. Sorry. You're just like... Just I will bring a, the sweatshirt home tonight, honey. <laughs> you can snuggle it together in your mud buddy sweatshirt. In my mud buddy sweatshirt. Hey, we have a Tangle Free Gunsling. This would go really nice on my brand new 
20 gauge that I just got that I'm going to actually take out on its maiden voyage. Well, actually, it'll be its second trip, but hopefully this time we get to shoot at something. Hopefully you get to shoot at something, yes. We didn't shoot at anything. Luke Powell just commented. Let's give him that. Luke Luke Powell, that's for you. I was hunting with a buddy a couple weeks ago. We've had high water all season and haven't been able to use Texas rigs. So we've had to use stringers all year, and his dog got caught in it. It was a scary situation. Lucky we got him out before it turned bad. Ooh. Yikes. Yeah, and I tell you what, I see that a lot. Uh, uh, oh, frozen. Yeah. So. Um. So, okay. Uh, it doesn't phase them at all. They're going back. They don't even know it's there. Other dogs. Other dogs get spooked by it. Have I still got a bad connection yet? You you you're, you came back just just real quick. Wrap us up with that, Jay Paul, because we gotta we gotta end it here. So wrap it up with that comment one more time because you froze through all of that. But I did want to hear. I was just gonna say, you know, if you see your dog get in trouble in the decoys, uh, be ready to react. Don't just wait for it to resolve itself. That's always a bad decision. Usually, if you wait too long, you wait too late. So, uh, yeah, be sure that you act on it really, really quick. A lot of great comments. I'm sorry you guys have to go. Y'all got to Christmas. I got to go. I got to go christmas size it up. But we've got lots to do. So tune in next week is our big Christmas giveaway. So, <laughs> sorry. So you don't want to miss this. I got all choked up. I'm so excited about there, it. There is a lot of cool stuff in my oh, office. Oh, my work. gosh. So next week, just like we did for the Thanksgiving giveaway, we are going to be asking you questions um, and then giving away some of the biggest things of the year. So tune in. That's going to be next week at 3 o'clock. Mountain Standard Time, right here live on Facebook. Jay Paul, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get you out because we're going to be probably out on the water doing that. So I don't, maybe on a phone, maybe we'll have to connect you somehow and to get you out. Or you should just fly in. Yeah, I was going to say, Jay Paul just needs to get his hiding out. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Come on, dude. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> great to get the new facility going. Uh, thank you guys so much. So I'd come back anytime. I've really enjoyed this. Thanks to everybody who's watching us on Facebook Live for all the great questions. Um, I've got a meeting going to here in a few minutes, but I'll come back later today and try to reply to all those that I can. So if I don't reply immediately, I'm not warning y'all for a good time. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Keith, Jeffrey, awesome. the lovely Emery that we can't see because she's off camera there. Yeah. Uh, Telling us what to do. You guys on Shadow Water Beach. Right, cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you to Jay Paul and thank you to all of our sponsors Echo Calls, Tango Free. XL Boats, Lucky Duck, Deep Apparel, and Ducks Waterfowl Co. <laughs> there's Ambry. There's Ambry right there. Ambry. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week.